Look true. how good the graphics are now. Like we've been watching for the past fucking half hour. So um, our tour, you remember him recent, the most recent thing with him was second most recent thing was him getting pulled over on the highway. You can shop at Costco. You can shop at Walmart. You can't go to his church. You can go to liquor stores. You can go to the Bunny Ranch. You can go to OnlyFans. You can jerk off to porn. But you can't go to church and talk to your fellow community members about possibly running our own society and taking care of our own lives. And do you have the footage of him getting busted on the highway? Yeah. So after seeing that, some Americans said, let's get him down here because he represents the power of Christianity, the power of the people. Let's get him down here on a, on a speaking tour. So he was just in New York. His wife is taking over the, the uh, church back in Calgary, Alberta. She's a wonderful, ballsy fighter. I, I talked to him uh, when he was in New York about this, and he was, I was saying, because um, my wife doesn't like conflict. And I was like, does your wife have a nervous breakdown? She's telling you to stop this all the time. I would say behind every great man is a great woman shitting her pants <laughs> and saying, why did you do this to us? And he goes, no, she's very, she's Polish too. So she's very sort of not apathetic, but uh, stoic about it. And he was just, he said after the church thing, he goes, I think that they're going to arrest me at some point. And she's eating her cornflakes. She's like, oh yes, definitely. You're going to be arrested within the next few days. And he goes, oh, thanks. And she goes, sorry, it's just a fact. It's unavoidable. There's nothing you can do about it. So you will plow forward and we will keep fighting and I'll run the church and when you are in jail, we'll try to get you out. Um, and he, she was right. And he, that's him getting arrested there. They threw him in jail for three days. Uh, but th since he's gotten out, he's gone on this speaking tour. That's a smashing success. Have you got the link for that? Yeah. What is it? The <clears throat> FEC? I believe it's FEC United. Yeah. You can find out if he's, if he's in a town near you. This new lighting really shows the waves in my hair. I'm going to have to have a do-rag to get the kink out. And I know my hair looks very greasy here. That's because it is. Grease is good. How you doing there? Pretty good. But ideally, when you type it, it autofills. We've already d talked about this. There we go. What's the actual URL, though, so people can go there? FECUnited.com. That's Frederick Edward Caroline United.com. And click on events. Upcoming events. Go down. So what do we got? Uh, June. Pastor Archer Polowski, June 13th. So we got June 22nd. He just did. Virginia. In Scottsdale. Go down. California. So Mir Marietta, California, he's there June 23rd, June 24th. So he's all over California. West Coast. Late June. San Jose, catch him there. Look at this. He's tearing it up. Then he's off to Ohio, Elmhurst. Illinois, yeah, yeah. Brilliant speaker. He was the guy, remember, saying, Nazis, fascists, get out, get out. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. We had that on the show a million years ago. Anyway, Powerful. can you pull him up? Is he around? Uh, yes, I will pull him up. Let's say hi to Imagine. our tour. Pastor, are you there, sir? Yes. How are you doing now? You're on an American tour? Yes, I am. I am greatly humbled, excited. I don't think I've ever seen so many lions in one place than in United States of America. I mean, it's incredible. You know, with those types of people, Savannah would be ours. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because here in America, we were watching you fight over in Alberta and watching Montrealers fight and people fighting in Toronto for to, to oppose the pandemic. And uh, I was sort of worried about America. I thought Canada seems to be having bigger balls than America does. Well, and that's why we need each other, right? That's the beauty about coming together. We get the courage from each other because courage is contagious. It's like a wildfire. When you hang around with the light type of people, when you come together uh, surrounded by people that want to do something, not just talk, uh, that they think alike, that they are pushing towards the same goals, which ultimately right now, the goal is freedom. 
um, we can do this together. You got to remember, I am a Polish immigrant. I grew up behind the Iron Curtain under the boots of the Soviets. And I did see the power of the solidarity movement in 1981, when all those people came together, realizing, wait a second, there is 50,000 of communists, but it's 36 millions of us. Why are we their slaves? Why are we submitting? The moment they decided, okay, enough, it's enough, they took it to the streets. And we know the history. We know how that story ended. Polish people became the best democracy on earth. Yeah, see, that's the problem with letting the people win. Once they win once, they realize how easy it is, and they get into the habit of winning, which it seems like you're in the center of right now. Uh, Pastor, i got to ask yeah. you, how do you answer this question? Why was Costco and Walmart available, open for business throughout the entire pandemic, and why were you not allowed to preach at your church? Oh, the answer is very simple, actually. For a Polish immigrant, I understand exactly what is going on uh, because I grew up under the Soviet, uh, you know, communistic party, which used, listen to this, they used identical, identical um, scenarios. So it looks like they're flipping the pages from the same book. <laughs> Why the churches were shut down? Because in the churches, the freedom starts when the people are coming together why no social distancing uh, wh why they're pushing social distancing physical distancing why they're telling you and me do not come uh, do not um, you know associate yourself keep your distance don't have family at dinners and you can go shopping because they don't want people to start talking. When the people meet, there is an exchange of information. People start to talk to each other and say, hey, did you see this? Wow. Oh, here I have the proof for that. And that's why during the Soviet era, even if you were listening to European radio, you could go to jail for five years. If you were caught with a pamphlet that was not approved by the Communistic Party, you could go to jail. You would be tortured. You would be harassed. You would be arrested. You would be thrown in prison because this whole fight has always been about the same thing. It's about the truth. Truth is like a pillar, pillar that stands in the middle and doesn't need any more support. But the lie, the lie needs misinformation, disinformation, more lies terror, fear, the lie cannot stand on its own. That's why those people are bringing tyranny. This is a medical tyranny. This is a mixture of communism, fascism, socialism, hybrid, if you will, taking over the entire country. This is not an attack just on, you know, uh, just in Europe, just, uh, uh, you know, in one part of the world. This is a globalistic agenda. When people come together, in those surroundings, like in clubs, bars, restaurants, houses, churches, they can talk, they can organize, they can do something. They feel emboldened to go like a pride of lions coming together. However, Walmart, there is no place over there really to congregate. You are to buy your necessities of life and off you go. Right. Or liquor store. Well, There's no community if you want to subdue subdue the, the, the society, give them alcohol, give them sex give them marijuana, uh, give them necessities of life and send them home. So for me, it's very simple. They are just repeating the same history. Now, in, in your community, in your area in Alberta there, were they as hard on mosques and temples and synagogues as they were on, on Christian churches? No, because Islam is part of their chaos. So you got to remember, they have a saying, and in their saying, uh, this is their quote, if from out of chaos their order will come so islam is a perfect ideology to bring chaos and disorder they want that they want people pillaging they want uh, the blm they want antifa the police is not arresting them the police is protecting them and the same with the mosques the mosques are open through all of this time S listen to this not one single muslim so far got the COVID ticket not one imam got got COVID ticket not one imam was arrested just two days after we were released with my brother from prison where we were tor tortured by the police. We were shoved on the wall. They put chains on our legs. They deprived us from sleep for three days and two nights. And if that's not torture, I don't know what it is. We were forced to no, sleep Stalin, on the concrete. Stalin floor. would do exactly that in Czechoslovakia before it was Czechoslovakia. He would keep them up for three days, and they would end up confessing to whatever crimes he wanted. It's a Stalinist tactic. That's it. 
Yes, and it has been used throughout history. Uh, every totalitarian government is using it. The Soviets did it, the Germans, the Gestapo. You know, why do you think I call them Gestapo and Nazis and fascists and communists? Because they started to act like those boys uh, from You got to remember, Adolf Hitler was democratically elected. Everything he did, according to him, was lawful. And he used the brown shirts to beat up every opposition. He used the Gestapo. He used the SS. He used uh, the armed forces of his party to subdue the rest of the society. So history is being repeated as we speak right now. They're using identical tactics and they want chaos. So again, two days after I was arrested with my brother David, the imam called their people to come so 2000 muslims came during the rally i saw it with my own eyes thousands of people imam speaking no masks no physical distancing thousands of them only 15 people are allowed to to be outdoors no police no ahs no violence no tickets no arrests meanwhile they built a fence around your entire church like like you were farm cattle yeah, they did that outside of um, Pastor Coates James Church in Edmonton. Oh, right. They fenced, they put three churches. Uh, what they've done to my friend Tim Stevens, that's another pastor, which is right now still in prison. In prison, they locked the, the, do the doors, they've locked, they changed the locks illegally. Everything they're doing right now, you got to remember. We have a Charter of Rights and Freedoms where it says where is Canada acknowledges the supremacy of God and the rule of God, uh, law. Everything they're doing right now is illegal, but they are doing it. They've changed. They've broken into a private property. They changed the locks and they've told that guy and his congregation if they come back, if they will break their lock to their own property, all of them will be arrested. But so they were locked out of the church and they did the church outside and the helicopter was looking for them. And the next day, the guy was arrested in front of his eight children and is still in prison as we speak right now. Political opponents, Maxime Bernier, he is the leader of the People's Party in Canada, the biggest party right now that has a chance to take over the government. He was a cabinet minister during the conservative era. He was arrested because he was on the way to speak at the rally. My friend, Kevin J. Johnston, he's running to be a mayor to replace this homosexual Muslim mayor that is hunting Christians, uh, Nahed Nenshi. He is running to be a mayor. He's still in prison for over a month. You know his crime? He yeah. went to a freedom rally and he was not wearing a mask. Unbelievable. I mean, here in New York, we had 200,000 people talking about the importance of trans lives, zero arrests, zero masks, zero anything, and they get away with it. But... This, when the community that's forming could go against the government, that's when they seem to care. Like, you got pulled over on the highway, right? Pull that up. That's right. right. In a, in a minute, that's a Pastor Stevens. Um, I know a very wonderful man, a nice Canadian. People say, you know, Art, you're too aggressive. You use your words, you know, so aggressively. And I'm thinking to myself, look, they're not doing this just to me. You can blame me that I'm a fired up Polish immigrant and I am upset and I call evil when I see evil. And those people are evil, wicked uh, rulers right now, want to be tyrants, the, the pharaohs of the land. So I'll call them Gestapo and fascists. But this Pastor Tim, the nicest man you ever met, eight kids, a very gentleman, uh, he was arrested and still in prison. I was arrested with my brother David in the middle of a busy highway, uh, listen to this, by anti-terrorists. <laughs> the SWAT team arrested me. Why? Because I am so violent and I have so many, you know, charges uh, for assault. No, I've never been charged for assault. I have never been charged for being violent. We're peaceful people. Yes, I use my tongue. That's my sword. That's yes. my gun. I speak. I preach. I use my, 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 my tongue uh, to fight the tyrants. Uh, but I was taken by anti-terrorists. Can you imagine the massive force of people uh, to come and take down uh, look and you know what the, you know what the police officer said to me he says i'll charge you with resisting arrest wow wow you know i saw this christian baker a long time ago and he had lost his whole business and been persecuted for not baking the cake and he said i like this 
He said, this is God testing me. He's testing my faith. And I'm happy to show him how devoted I am. And he wasn't remotely discouraged. Do, do you get like that? Do you have the same sort of lion heart? Or do you sometimes you go, I want to just quit. This is too much. I mean, your wife must of course be complaining. We yeah, of course, we have all kinds of different thoughts under pressure. But no, I'm actually excited. Like, listen to this. They have given me the biggest pulpit a, pe a, a preacher, a pastor could imagine. I preach to millions of people as we speak right now. Um, I have open doors left and right. I got hundreds of invitations all over the world to go and preach my message, which is, which is a message of love, a message of forgiveness, a message of truth, a message of freedom. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot be free. They have given me the ability to deliver that message. Yes, the body sometimes is broken. When I was there, I would be a liar if I would tell you I enjoyed being on the concrete floor. No, I did not. My every bone was hurting after a while. I did not enjoy it when the police shoved me on the wall and said to me, are we going to have a problem with you? I was not enjoying when they confiscated my belongings and they threw it into the garbage bin in front of me and there was nothing I can do about it. I will be a liar if I would tell you I enjoyed walking in chains on my legs like a little duck moving. No, that was not comfortable. However, however, the church grows by the blood of the martyrs. We are the seed. Whatever they push, whatever they do to us, expands. Look, I'm preaching right now. This was a packed meeting, and I got standing ovations so many times. It was very humbling. This is in Denver, Colorado. You know, I'm preaching. I was preaching in Manhattan. Can you imagine a little guy like me from Canada, <laughs> Alberta, Calgary, preaching in Manhattan, New York City? I had a meeting with the General Flynn. I had a meeting with yes. advisors to Donald Trump. I've heard that Donald Trump send a tweet saying that he would like to meet with me. I have I will have a meeting with governors of number of states. I mean, a little guy like me just wants to be a preacher. I said to the authorities, leave me be. I just want to feed the poor. I just want to preach the gospel of salvation. Let me do my job. You have your job. Do your job. Let me do mine. But they refuse. So now I'm enjoying the right. I am very grateful to what God is doing, and I will not stop. You see, we have a saying in our ministry. Winners never quit. Quitters never win. I am a winner. I am a son of the living God, and I'm destined to win. You know what gives me courage? I've read the end of the book, the Bible. I know we win in the end. <laughs> so true. Well, you won in Poland, and you're winning here. And congratulations for it. You're an inspiration, Pastor. Thank you so much. If people want to come and follow um, our story, F um, F F E C. Uh, United, uh, that's where we are uh, posting the stuff um, about the tour. I'm preaching right now, speaking and uh, telling the story about what happened tonight in um, Arizona. And then we are moving to California. I got a number of speaking engagements in California as we speak right now. And then I got invited all over this great, amazing country. Uh, Joe is putting this together. Joe Altman, the man that broke the Dominion machines. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yep, yep. I'm meeting. I'm meeting so many amazing people. So many amazing lions. I'm so excited, and I'm telling you, I plan to stay here for a little bit longer. That's fantastic. All right, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much. God bless, and may God keep uh, may God keep America glorious and free just like he wants to do with Canada. Be blessed. Cheers. See what I'm doing here? I'm toying with you. I'm toying with your emotions. I show you all this disgusting pedophile crap and people being banned from our own platform. <laughs> our own contributors being banned from our own platform for violating free speech laws. And you get disheartened, especially when you see that poor little girl who's the most successful prostitute sleeping with different men every night dressed as a child and then you see the power of god the power of christ and the power of the people getting together and you realize it all starts with a small community it all starts with my neighborhood block and then we slowly build from that and the next thing you know we have a revolution poland defeated communism and now it's i mean there's what who has ball